this is Douglas Film in the studio on this mild winter night. It is above freezing outside. Today I'm going to look at an oscilloscope, the GW Instec 1000 series. Let's go in the workshop and have a look. Hello, this is Douglas Film in the workshop, and today we're going to do an unboxing of my new oscilloscope, the GW Instec GDS 1102B. As you can see on the box, I purchased it from Amazon.com. So let's open up the box and see what's inside. Of course, to do an unboxing, you have to have an unboxing knife. And I've got my uh, Gerber knife. So let's just get to it here. And the other side, if it'll go. I'm blind. There we are. Let's get the knife away. Paper. And surprise, surprise. A box within a box. Back to the unboxing knife. Okay, put the knife away, come on, and we open it up, and that's what you get when you look inside it, you can see it with this terrible lighting I have here. So what do we get in the box? Get the probes, the manual, disc, and such. Most importantly, we get the toy. Let's get it out of here. You go over there. And it comes in a plastic bag. It smells like a plastic bag. Put that there. And there we have it. Okay, now that the cat's out of the bag, or should I say oscilloscope, let's go take a look at it where the lighting is better. Okay, after much effort, I have moved into this small cluttered room where the lighting is worse, possibly. Anyway, in the bottom of the box, I found this certificate of traceable calibration from GW Instec. It says, it says down the bottom they used a Fluke 5820A oscilloscope calibrator. They've got the ID and they've got the date. It was calibrated 9-27-15. So it's like four months old if that's to be believed. And it was issued by Wu and his manager is Wang. So according to Wu and Wang, this thing is calibrated. Okay, in the box with the calibration certificate, there is this little uh, hazardous materials chart, I take it. It's written in Chinese. And it's got lead, mercury, cadmium, chromium, PBB, and PBDE. And the only box that's checked is PCB with the uh, lead, with the PB, which is, is lead. So it must be the lead solder that this thing has. Okay, I've got the thing turned around, so let's have a look at the back of it. On the back we have a device. It looks like a USB uh, connector. Cal BNC connector. Go no go connector. The uh, GW Instec label with uh, 
10 with the arrows around. I think that's a, a what hazardous stuff. says don't throw it in the trash. And the one thing that's missing are certifications. All it has is the uh, CE, European certification, which is not really that great. There's no UL listing, no German listing. So this is obviously uh, not to be used in a you know commercial environment where you need to have the things be correct. And the little label that says line voltage range AC 100 to 240 volts, frequency range 50 to 60 hertz, and the maximum power is 30 watts. Then over here we have the C14 connector to plug the cord in with. Okay, well we've got this thing turned around. Let me do a quick check and make sure that the earth ground is connected. So, put one of my probes to the uh, ground on the C14 connection. Then let's touch some metal here. It looks like that's into plastic. So, it looks like the earth ground is connected. Let's make sure none of the other ones are. Nope. So the earth ground is in place. Okay, before we look further at the scope, let me just kind of explain why I bought the scope. The scope. I wanted an entry-level scope, something that was not that expensive, but you know had pretty good bang for your buck. And when you think of entry-level scopes, you know brands like Siglent, Regal, Oan, BK Precision, and Handtech come to mind. Of course, the Handtech has scopes that can be hacked up to 200 megahertz, and the Regal is uh, famous for its hacks. But I wanted a scope that operated somewhat like the uh, entry level 1000 series Tektronix scopes, so I went with this GW Instec GDS. 1102B. That's my logic. Good or bad. Okay, if we look at the thing, it's got a label up here. Yeah. That looks like it could come off any minute. You have a 7 inch screen with the buttons along the bottom, along the side. It's got two channels. Uh, he looked at the four channel 50 megahertz model, but I decided to go for the 100 megahertz two channel model mainly because I wanted the external trigger. And then I do have a CRT oscilloscope, an old uh, HP 172 series or s something like that. I can't really recall so. And it's a nice two-channel, 250 megahertz scope. It was working last time I checked it. Anyway, it has vertical controls for each channel, which I like. It's got the variable button, measure, cursor, app, acquire, display, help, save, recall, utility, scale, position. You got zoom, and we got some search buttons, select button. Position, small button, scale button, math reference, bus, channel one, channel two, auto set, run stop, single, default, trigger, menu, 50%, force trig, power button over here. Oh, the feet don't. Yeah, it's the hard power button, probe calibration lead, the uh, BNC connector for channel 1, BNC connector for channel 2, and the external trigger. Yeah, I don't have the regular feed up, so so that's the front. There's a lot of uh, extra space there. If you got the four channel mode, the knobs are there. And the screen looks good. So now let's uh, turn it on. Okay, I've connected a probe to it, 
connected a C13 connector to the C14 connector on the back of the scope. So let's turn it on. Okay, channels light up. I hear the fan. DW Instec on the screen. Software loading. Come on. Okay, there we are. Hmm, okay. Where's the uh, auto button? And there we have a square wave here. Uh huh. Those work. Basically, that's the what the scope looks like turned on, and of course, everybody shows you the uh, calibration. You know, a screen with the probes hooked to the uh, square wave generator. So let's do something a little different. Let's get my uh, VCR out and hook up the probes so we can look at perhaps an uh, audio signal and a, a video signal. Alrighty, that's hooked up to the uh, audio signal left channel of my VCR. So that's what that looks like. Yeah, there we go. So now let's just uh, pause and switch and look at the video channel. Okay, now I am back and that's the uh, video channel. Of course I'm learning so you know, I don't know entirely what we're looking at. So that's something a, a little different there. That's so yeah, that's a frozen video signal. So we see that both channel works. I'm new to all this. Anyway, that's the uh, scope itself. Oh, then if any of you saw the Aussie fella, the little guy from Australia, what's his name? Dave Jones on his EEV blog channel where he tore one of these down. I think he tore the four channel one down and there was no uh, shielding. I peeked in the sides, puts this thing up to the light, and looked into the scope, and my scope is similar. Okay, hope that's in focus. Personally, I like the size of the scope. I like a larger scope. I don't like things too small. I have big hands. I'm a taller person, so I like things that are a little larger. I like the way the knobs are spaced out on it. Easy to see, easy to get to. Some people think it's too big with too much wasted space. I think it's just fine. I like the screen. I like how the menus on the screen can be turned off. And looking at the buttons, only the small buttons can be pressed. The big buttons press all day but they don't do anything. It would be nice if it had a bigger screen but that would be more money. They use this case on their other instruments. If you look, they just kind of cut out what they need and print what they need on there. I've got the instrument turned around and it's on. And I can say the fan does make some noise. If I didn't know better, I think it was a Regal instrument. So let's use some tissue paper here and see airflow. As you can see, the fan sucks in air. It does blow it out over here. Blows it out there. 
Okay, that's the noise levels with uh, no probes attached to it. I don't know how significant that is. Some people make a big deal out of it. Me, I'm just a hobbyist learning how to use an oscilloscope. I don't think it's going to be a much problem for me with what I'm going to be measuring. You know, some people are super, super picky. I understand life is as it is, and everything has its limitation. If I wanted a super duper accurate low noise scope, I save up my money and get a Tektronics or Agilent high end scope. But this little entry level toy should be fine for me. Oh, as for build quality, it doesn't seem to have the build quality of the Regals. I think they're a little better, but I don't think it's going to fall apart anytime soon. I'm not going to be bouncing it around on a cart. It's basically going to stay in one place in my workshop. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. One thing I don't know about is how well GW Instec keeps up with uh, firmware fixes. You know, fixing bugs, how often do they put out an, an updated uh, firmware for this instrument. I know they have a few apps that you can download for free. Uh, I'm not sure if there'll be more apps coming. I'm not sure if people will write apps for it. I think a lot depends on how popular the scope becomes. Okay, let's take a look at everything that came in the bag with the scope. Okay, we have the user's manual on disk, paper quick start guide, oh, the packing list. It says we have one digital storage oscilloscope, uh, separate probes for each channel. Since I have a two-channel model, I have two probes. Uh, like I said, the uh, CD user's manual, the quick start guide, and one AC power cord. And this was checked by Mr. Lim. Here are the probes. Adequate uh, probe that comes with these uh, bottom of line scopes. Okay, that's about it for the uh, unboxing and quick look at this scope. I'll be back with more videos in the future when I figure out how to use it. I will let you know what I like about it and what I don't like about it and also do some demonstration videos of some projects as they come along. Okay, that's it from the workshop here. Let me send it back to myself in the studio. Okay, well I hope you found that somewhat useful. Until next time, this is Douglas Film. Goodbye.